So now that we've derived our formula for Taylor series, let's try and create Taylor series for some common functions. First one I want to look at here is e to the x. Um, so let's think about what we need to do. In this formula, the, there's really two things that need to be figured out. First of all, what are we going to have for a? Remember a, think of in Calc 1 when you made a tangent line, you had to create that tangent line somewhere along the curve. That's the same thing here. We're going to center this or create it at some x value. Um, and then after we figure out what our a is going to be, then we've got to look for a pattern in the derivatives of our function at that point so we can write a nice closed form formula there. Um, well, let's think about this. There's very few values of e to the x that we actually know precisely. Um, you know, what makes this a transcendental function is the fact that the base is this irrational number e that we can really only get to as a limit itself, and then we're raising that number to a power. So, um, really the only one that is nice, rational, um, would be e to the zero. Right, e to the zero is one, that's a nice value. So that really leads us to choose a as our center. So, um, or, or excuse me, zero as our a there. Center it at zero, because that's a value that we actually know. I mean, if I plug in one, that's e, but what is e? But this limit, and I don't want to have a whole bunch of limits within this series. Now what we need to do is figure out this. What does the nth derivative of that function look like at zero? Well, that's the beauty of e to the x. It doesn't take long, right? We know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Therefore, the second derivative is e to the x. And all derivatives are e to the x. So all derivatives at zero are just e to the zero or one. So our series, this term is always just one, which makes this nice. So our derivatives at a are one n factorial x minus our a in this case was 0 to the n. So there's our Taylor series for e to the x. We could neaten that up a little bit. Just say x to the n over n factorial. And to get a better sense of what that looks like, let's just write it out write out some terms here. Um, when n is 0, this is just 1. And then when it's 1, it's x to the first over 1 factorial. Then x squared over 2 factorial. x3 over 3 factorial. And so on forever. Right? That's our series. The series continues on forever. Now, in practice, what we'll do is when we want to use this series, often at the end we want to evaluate it at some point, maybe at x equal 2 or x equal half or something. And we're going to have to stop somewhere and approximate that series with a partial sum. So there's our first partial sum, our second partial sum, our third partial sum, and so on. Because the partial sum of a Taylor series is a polynomial, we call them Taylor polynomials. So our Taylor polynomials here look like, and we typically subscript them by what we call their order. So the zero order means go in your series up to the zero degree and take all those terms. Well, for us, that's just one. The first order means take the partial sum all the way up to that first degree term 
or matching up to the first derivative, second order Taylor polynomial, and so on. So these are partial sums of our series. And because of the form of a power series, they end up being polynomials. So what I want to do is take a look at these Taylor polynomials and compare them to our original function. So what happens as we go farther and farther up in these Taylor polynomials or get closer and closer to the actual full series? So I want to look at some graphs in Desmos and we'll take a look at how these polynomials relate to that function. Okay, so what we see here is the blue curve is e to the x, and that black line is its current Taylor polynomial, and we're able to control what order Taylor polynomial we're looking at with this slider. Um, in this demonstration, I'll have a link for, so you can play around with this as well. Um, so right now it's set at the zero order Taylor polynomial, which we saw just a moment ago was one. Um, and all that does is make, makes a linear equation that will match the function, and that's it. So it's just a constant, uh, passes through the same point as the function. If we move up to first order, we have the tangent line. Remember, the first order Taylor polynomial is just the same as our tangent line from Calc 1. It passes through the same point there at zero and also has the same slope at zero. And then as we move up, this would be a quadratic approximation. Um, this is the one plus x plus x squared over two factorial. And now it's got the same concavity, so it bends in the same direction as the curve. Uh, notice it's, it does a pretty good job over on the right of matching because the exponential takes off to infinity like a polynomial does. Now the left side's a little bit harder for it to match because it's asymptotic to the x-axis and polynomials, no matter how high the degree, will eventually peel off to infinity or negative infinity. So now I'm just going to let this run up through the orders here. Maybe slow that down a little bit so we can see it happen. Back up. So as we go up to higher and higher degree, we see those, especially on the right, those two cur curves are converging on one another. Or I guess the Taylor polynomial is converging on e to the x. e to the x is just sitting there. Um, and then on the left hand side, it's doing a better and better job of matching. Now it's important to keep in mind that at this resolution, it appears as though the curve is identical for a while, but there is error in there, but we're seeing that that error is becoming smaller and smaller. If we were to zoom in far enough, we could start to pick up that error in here. Uh, but at this resolution, um, it looks pretty good. And now you see as we go up in order, we're about to 36 degree now. We're matching way out there to negative 14 or so. Um, we can keep zooming out see where we're falling off. And, that, and you notice that we'll always fall off because a polynomial will f finally diverge off to negative or positive infinity in the long run. Um, but we see it getting better and better there. Now, the question that arises is what happens when this process goes on forever? So if we take the Taylor series, which would be letting the order go to infinity, does the approximation become so good that it's actually the same thing? And that's what we'll prove later on, but right now I'm just trying to convince you with the graph that it seems reasonable that the Taylor series may be the function because the Taylor polynomials are getting better and better at matching that function. And once we can prove that the series and the function are identical, then anytime we want, we can replace the function with the series because mathematically they're identical. So we will prove that later on. So next we'll look at some other functions. We'll look at sine x and cosine x Taylor series.